5 Modern Day Phrases Unexpectedly Introduced by Shakespeare Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Beyond Crazy. 5. What a late night hoot. Like many playwrights then and now, Shakespeare often employed imagery and references to animals. That in and of itself isn't weird or uncommon at all. And even in many of the most basic cases in his plays, Shakespeare's comparisons were as straightforward as could be. Take, for example, the play Richard II. At one point in that creation, Shakespeare writes that for night I'll shriek where mounting larks should sing. That's a very standard, and not at all metaphorical, reference to owls that do their hunting and roaming at night. But wait! Shakespeare also got more creative with the use of night owl as an idiom. Looking for a more metaphorical move, the playwright brought back the animal reference later on in his poem The Rape of Lucrece. However, this time around, he was not referring to the actual owl itself, he was talking about a person who burns the so-called midnight oil. Writing in the poem, Shakespeare delivered this line, this said, his guilty hand plucked up the latch, and with his knee the door he opens wide. 4. Critics Critiquing Content In Act 3, scene I of Shakespeare's Love's Labors Lost, the lovesick character Biron casts his own personal judgment upon his not-so-positive past behavior. Lamenting the man who he has become, the forlorn and downtrodden character says, I, that have been love's whip, a very beetle, to a humorous sigh, a critic, nay, a nightwatch constable, a domineering pedant o'er the boy, than whom no mortal so magnificent. That middle line in that stanza, where Biron announces his life as a critic, nay, a nightwatch constable, is the key one here. The word critic itself far predates Shakespeare. It actually comes from Middle French and the word critique, which was adopted by the French via the Latin criticus. Before that, it was a Greek word, criticus, which roughly translates to being able to make judgments. And that word was born from another, earlier Greek word, crinian, which was a verb meaning to decide or to separate. 3. Eyes on the prize. Shakespeare liked to create new words out of combining two seemingly disparate and seeing what resulted. A great example of this is a very simple word we take for granted as being completely standard and logical now, eyeball. That's right. In the late 16th century, Shakespeare brought something so seemingly simple as eyeball into the popular lexicon. Now, to be fair to the actual creator of the term, virtually all historians today can agree that Shakespeare did not invent the word combo. Other writers were using eyeball as early as 1580. But other writers were not nearly as popular then or now as this beloved playwright, so Shakespeare's use in two different plays immediately and fully popularized the term. First, just before 1600, Shakespeare used the term with memorable effect in A Midsummer Night's Dream as such. 2. Green with Envy Shakespeare didn't invent the concept of jealousy, of course. That's gone back far into the ages and has been a known emotion by far too many lovers scorned through the eons. But Shakespeare is generally recognized as the first to connect jealousy and envy to the idea of one being green. This first came about in The Merchant of Venice just before 1600. In that play, the playwright had the character Portia say how all the other passions fleet to air as doubtful thoughts and rash embrace despair and shuddering fear and green-eyed jealousy. O oh love, be moderate, allay thy ecstasy, in measure rain thy joy, scant this excess. I feel too much thy blessing, make it less, for fear I surfeit. Then, a few years later, in 1604, Shakespeare wrote one of his most famous works of all time, Othello. In the play, the Englishman had the character Iago speak as such, Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy, it is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on, that cuckold lives in bliss who, certain of his fate, loves not his wronger. 1. That's wacky, ah, uh, zany. In Act V, scene 2 of Love's Labors Lost, the character Biron recites the following lines about the unfortunate discovery of one of his would-be love tricks, see the trick aunt, here was a consent, knowing beforehand of our merriment, to dash it like a Christmas comedy, some carry tale, some please man, some slight zany, some mumble news, some trencher night, some dick, that smiles his cheek in years and knows the trick, to make my lady laugh when she's disposed, told our. Intense before, which once disclosed, the ladies did change favors, and then we, following the signs, wooed, but the sign of she. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen, because I'm sure you'll love them.